Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of the most corrupt judges in the United States. His name is Judge David M. Gooden. Now, he's so corrupt that when he ran for the judgeship, he lied and saying that, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, he made about two different allegations that were false. And the Judicial uh, um, Qualifications Commission just gave him a slap on the hand, tell him to go up to the Supreme Court and let him reprimand him, but he kept the job. You see, this is the kind of guy that they will need, somebody who has a, 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 a Killian heel, and they could use him the way they want. Now, um, in many cases, judges seem to have to play according to what the prosecutors say. If they go against them, they could always tell the state that they're obstructing the, the, the cash coming in or whatever, and they're kind of criminal friend in and they're out to the uh, loop. So, he started off by being a scam, lying uh, in, the, in his declarations. Um, I can't remember all the allegations, but one of them was that he talked about his financials, some lie he made about the financials. Instead of them throwing it out and taking away judgeship from him, they allowed him to continue. Now, he happened to take my child away and put her in foster care. And um, this case started off with them using uh, a case number of an abuse um, case. Uh, where there was definitely and the parent even confessed to the abuse and it was you know the person was convicted and they used that file and when the case got on its way then they changed it to give it a new number to reflect nothing has happened um during the deliberation um i told him i don't want my attorney so he said no no no, he's gonna leave the attorney on and the attorney did nothing i mean the mom who has uh five felonies and five misdemeanors felonies for check fraud and a whole bunch of character or truthfulness uh, problems they accepted a dossier she wrote to me of about 15 pages in which she said i put my penis in the child's face i ride around with feces in my van all day and some other outrageous things like that and he believed it and uh you know they, they start saying some other things about me and forced me to have to defend myself because the attorney did no defense and then they asked me a question because see although it's a, a criminal charge of neglect abandonment or abuse they still have the prerogative of trying you as a uh, a civil matter and so they could ask you any question now i don't have experience and i didn't know much about it but i felt that the type of allegations they made were so serious that they shouldn't be able to get away with it and have it in my record now during the proceedings this prosecutor is going to talk to this judge off the record and say something like this the FBI told her that they have videos of my home in which there was definitely abuse um, they also said that uh, she asked me if I have any other child other than this one they're taking away from me I said no I don't know but I had a, ch and a relationship with a woman who I left and I came to California and she got pregnant and she had a child I don't even know so after I heard of it Oh, she's even told the, the judge that um, they have told the mom not to let me see the child. And if that is some assault, you know, and if I go over there and try to demand the rights to see the child, she should call the sheriff department and they know what to do. They will take me to jail and beat me up and do whatever they need to do, kill me perhaps. And, um, and so she was asking the FBI about my anatomy, if I have a big dick and stuff like that. She wants to look, see the video to see the sex act and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this judge wouldn't even object it and tell her she can't, or my attorney didn't even object it, you know, to talk about it off the record. And he sat down and he had some fun of it. In fact, he even looked at me, all I was a teacher and I had more education than him. He is saying that, oh, I don't look like I uh, could afford uh, an, an attorney, so he appointed without asking me. I look like if I can't afford it, which I couldn't, but I mean, I don't see what about me that says I can't, except that I'm black and they have a whole bunch of lie allegations about me. So this clung judge here now um, gives me this attorney who did nothing for me, man. In fact, they appointed him, he was in court, and they just say, oh, you defend him because he's black. But he is not going to rigorously object to what the judge says or the prosecutor says because they're the ones that appoint him to get work. So the public uh, defender system in America here is so corrupt that, man, you could get you could get some time in jail for, for be, even while being innocent because they could talk to him and say, listen, we want you to plead guilty to this lesser charge. And it's a charge anyway which has consequences. And if you don't go through the requirements of that, you could end up having the original, as if you were guilty of the original matter, and then you have some serious time in jail. So this judge here, um, you know, he presided over this matter and um, they give me a case plan. Oh, they, they, they um, they said I should go and see a psychologist because I want back my child. So I went over to see the psychologist. Now they're paying him a couple bucks. So he wanted me to pay him for the uh, opinion. Now whoever pays, you get a favorable opinion. But I felt that I didn't want to spend no money in this. You know, they, you know, take my child, let them spend the bucks. And he came up with some stuff, man. He's saying that he don't think that I understand my own mind. And that, um, 
I seem to be grandiose because my resume I had about, at that time probably I had about eight degrees. I had about two doctorates uh, and two masters and some other degrees and so on. He says that the psychologist says that he can't verify my education. And then I, in my resume I also said that uh, I was a manager in a, a grocery store and I had my own business in Canada and so on. He can't verify none of that. So he thinks that I'm grandiose. And this judge sat down and listened to this crap and decided that he can take away my child because I need to go and clear up this mental aid problems. You go on over to do what they ask you to do and they just keep you. When they decide, oh, I should have told you this. This summer Saladino says that my son, for now they're gonna let him stay with his mom, but they're gonna be monitoring him. So if he demonstrates some brilliance, because you see the problem is this, I used to go on television and talking some stuff that were futuristic. I was talking to America's about to collapse which almost happened in 08 and I came back and helped Obama to save the, 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 the country okay all right so I wasn't necessarily rejoicing that it was about to collapse but I was trying to say look these are things we could do to straighten up but all these white folks in Jacksonville man they were so up, up you know upset with me and all that but deep down they realized that this is brilliance but they're making it appear as if I have a mental problem and so she's saying that if my child demonstrates the kind of ability I have they're gonna take him away from his mom but if he continues being stupid or, you know, whatever, the normal black kind of, um, you know, sort of a stigma, whatever, you're going to be able to stay. And you see, what they will do is they will come up with somebody and call in an abuse or they're going to get the mom fired and make sure that they are scuttle her ability to maintain a home or take care of this child. And then, bam, they're going to take him and put him in foster care and knowing that he's going to end up a criminal a drug dealer just to make sure that no black really gets up. This is what's going on in Jacksonville. And this judge may be even a part of the Ku Klux Klan, I'm not sure, but he could be a part of the Jacksonville chapter of the Ku Klux Klan down there. So this clown judge here, I think that uh, he needs to have a mental checkup because this amount of abuse he's doing and putting all these kids away from the parents, seeing these parents crying. You know something, when they take kids away from the parents, these mothers not only end up with heart problems, they end up with mental problems, they end up going to qualify for social security. So it, it's a big case cash cow okay they take away the child they put them in foster care the foster care people get checked from the government uh, they also the attorney get 10 grand or whatever from the parents who wanted this designer child that they recommend you know prescribed and they uh, wanted and so on and now the mother comes back and also qualify for SSI so this is helping the economy to you know do well because there's a whole bunch of money swinging around there see so I want to know what's the purpose of this thing I mean is it just to keep the economy going is it to keep a permanent underclass is this to keep black folks down what's the problem with this judge and so I think that he needs a mental checkup I think that the federal government need to put him in Guantanamo because he's so corrupt and so evil that all this abuse is going on and he's smiling like this I'm quite sure he has a conscience at night when you go to bed it is be bothering him you know that I'm sure about that there's no question about that but he maybe take on his Prozac or whatever mental pills he take on so that he could look as if he's kind of serious and, and whatever but man this guy is so out of it and so evil that I think that you see you see the problem is this America's in superpower and this judge and others think that oh lord <laughs> nobody can do us nothing but when I read Jeremiah and I see how God talked about Israel on justice, um, injustice, um, the abuse of other things and uh, religious uh, decadence and the whole nine yards. And you say, you know what, <laughs> I'm going to destroy these people because they're, they're beyond help. And I think that this guy is putting America beyond help with the kind of injustice he perpetuates on these little kids. Having a perpetual criminal class coming up, putting them into a permanent loneliness. I think this judge here is going to be one of the ones that we could blame when this place collapse. And I don't know how we're going to happen, how long more we could keep on with this among the evil that he and others are doing in this country. But I just sounded in the warning that it's not about your might or bombs and whatever you have. When God says it's over, man, you could have you could have the best whatever. He would send a couple of angels to destroy whatever you have. A couple of storms, you know, a couple of economic problems. And just like all the other empires, it would collapse. So if America wants to survive, this judge and others like these corrupt folks, we need to put them in check and let them do what the Constitution say. Give people a fair trial. Don't abuse people. Don't abuse power because I'm saying, don't mind how mighty you are, if you abuse people as an individual, as a nation, as a society, as anything, God is going to end that kind of thing. So this judge, if things collapse, I blame him as one of the people who was the architect of the destruction of this nation by the amount of corrupt crap he's doing on these defenseless, poor kids and parents. So for this Christmas, my wish is that the government, you know, single him out and give him some mental help. 
because one of these days you know like these cops who abuse people and end up shooting somebody and the state has to pay thousands of dollars plus the society burn up and a little bit and more people are learning that you know injustice and corruption is kind of like maybe a way of life i think they need to stop it